Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 Hello and Welcome. You're watching Vision Plus. I'm Bonnie Liphart, and we have a wonderful group of people, most of you know, that watch the program occasionally, that we are hosts, Tony and I are hosts, for the International Services uh, Council, in, primarily in Alabama. And we have some of the members that have agreed to tell us a little bit about who all is here and why they're here. And I'm going to t uh, talk, first of all, to my friend Natalie that I met a few days ago and have her to tell us about what all is going on. And we'll also tell some of the other people that are here. So, Natalie, tell us um, what is uh, your whole program that you're doing, what you do from Israel. Okay, I'm Natalie and I live in Jerusalem, in Israel. I work for a very well-known NGO, which is called the Movement for Quality Government in Israel, which fights corruption in the public sector in Israel. Uh, the problem we're in in the United States called um, NGOs and Civic Society. Uh, which is non-governmental organizations. organizations. Yes. Uh, so give me an example of some in Israel. First of all, it's a program by the Department of State, the U.S. Department of State. Who brought us all here? Yes, from the uh, United States in Washington, D.C. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of an NGO uh, in Israel, besides my NGO. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we yours and then maybe another. Uh, we have another a very big NGO which is called Ellen. It's for youth in risk. Mm -hmm. uh, they work uh, with uh, the youth who are out of schools or uh, come from underprivileged families. Youth at risk. Yeah, youth uh -huh. at risk. And introduce your buddy right next to you. I'll call him Mike, but you can. Okay. Um, well, tell uh, us a little bit about where you're from and yeah, what you're doing. I'm from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and um, I'm with the Civil Liberties Organization. The Civil Liberties Organization. Civil Liberties Organization. Liberties Organization. Organization. And what we do primarily is uh, social, political, and human rights advocacy. Okay, yeah, help us out. Um, we have an interpreter over here. That's not really his name, but or what he does. But we're gonna say uh, just to speak it slowly and explain what you just said. I said, is it is it primarily a social, political, and human rights organization? Political, social, political, and human rights organization. Beautiful. Okay, that's perfect. Right. Uh, so, how did you get involved in this program? Well, um, is uh, I got involved because I relate to the U.S. Uh, State Department through the consulate in Lagos. Uh huh. The State Department. And you got it through Lagos. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. To, to to the consul to the so U.S. consul in Lagos. So what got you interested in this program? Well, uh, I see it as something that will help the cause for which I stand. And um, I believe that by participating in the program, I will get some ideas and learn more about civic learn engagement, more. Mm -hmm. learn more about civic engagement, and then be able to distill those lessons into what I do in my country. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, I was excited. Now, uh, I am not supposed to tell who's uh, over there from Washington, D.C., <laughs> so I guess I won't, but at least if you will tell me who are the other group that's with you. There's yes, we are 14, all in all. Uh, here in Huntsville, uh, in Alabama, we're only four, uh, me and Inapoco, and we have uh, a participant from Malaysia, and we have another participant and from And uh, what's Lao. his name from Malaysia? Adrian. 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 And we have Manolin. Uh, from Laos. Uh huh. Yes. And how are they different from your program in Israel? What do you mean? Uh, you, it's non-governmental yes. organization, and 
what how is theirs different from what you're doing? Uh, we all come from uh, NGOs, but each and every one of us, as he said, human rights. We deal with corruption. Uh, Adrian deals with uh, environment, and uh, Manolin is a lawyer working for promoting also uh, civic participation. So we all come from different fields. Uh -huh. And uh, do you remember if uh, Adrian, some of their projects that they've been involved in and yes. how they happened to come here? Well, I can tell you, generally speaking, all of us were nominated by our embassies. I, for instance, have been working with the American Embassy in Israel for the past couple of years. They are supporting one of our projects, uh, and they nominated me to come and take part in this program and to be able to exchange knowledge and gain new tools and share my knowledge with the other participants. What do you think you have learned so far? And you said there's 14 altogether, and only yes. four in the city of yes. Huntsville with your uh, the person from Washington <laughs> that continually tells me. Yeah, allowed to say his name out loud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a wonderful help for everyone. And he's doing this for a person who couldn't be here yes. because I think they got ill or for some yes, reason. Yes, yeah. Uh, but uh, what what do you think so far you've learned? Because you, you're now on your way to Oregon, yes. then back to Washington, D.C., and you came from New Orleans, uh, and you yeah. have a group in. Kentucky? Yes, and, and we have another group in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. And you will all get back together again in yes. Portland. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. this week right? actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I think we've learned that we, even though we come from different countries and different cultures and we come from different NGOs and fields of expertise, I think we've learned that we share the same problems and difficulties. And around the very, world. Around the world and even with the NGOs here in the States. And it was very important. It's a very important mm -hmm. lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, and we try to think together, maybe come up with solutions together. And I really hope that after this program ends, we'll be able to build many partnerships. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to still call you Mike, if it's <laughs> all right with you. Uh, you have a really unique uh, situation in that you're also a Christian. We don't think of someone from Nigeria being a Christian. We always think that uh, my sister-in-law is from Indonesia and she's Muslim and I had another sister-in-law that was from Germany and they were uh, she was German Jews, so they were Jewish related. It seems that yours is unique. How did you happen, happen to become a Christian? Well, well, well I, I, first and foremost, let me correct uh, a perception. It is wrong to think that everybody from Nigeria is not a Christian. Yeah. I said. I know I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nigeria really is divided in, majorly into two uh, religious groups. You have the North Tampa, which is predominantly Muslim, but you also have Christians there. Mm -hmm. But and then you also have the southern part, which is predominantly Christian, but you also have Muslims there. It's just that the Muslims in the southern part of Nigeria they are more liberal. Than more those. liberal? Yeah, liberal. Liberal? 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 Yeah. Liberal, they have more liberal views, uh -huh. tend, to be, uh, more, tend to be left centered uh, than those in the north. But, but how did you become a Christian? How did. Well, I, I was born into a Christian home. But um, Christianity or religion didn't really become personal to me until I grew up and I started facing some health issues, problems of life, and all of that. Of course, at some point in your life, even if you were born a Christian, uh, it will just be like a routine for you. It will really make sense to you until the storms of life and the and, and the troubles of life start start beating at the door. And so when they start beating at my doorsteps, uh, religion became really personal to me because I then I have to realize that I can't just rely on mommy or dad or, or my uncle or somebody to do prayers for me. And then I have to realize that God has to become really real and personal to me. And I think that was when I actually became an as the Christians who put it, gave my life to Christ. Uh -huh. Yes. So you, that was a choice you made. And mm -hmm. I know that there are others in the group that are Muslim, that don't eat pork, they don't, you know, that my sister-in-law didn't eat any mm -hmm. pork, and lots, but there is not a human walking this earth that's any sweeter than she is, or the two of you, <laughs> and the Thank other you. two people that yeah. are too shy to be on television. You know, <laughs> no, it's important really because um, we don't, it's important that whenever we do anything, we don't bring a religion to it. 
because uh, when, we, when we want to discuss, when we want to talk, and when we start from the premise of religion, we're never going to agree from the aspect. Because there will be so many things dividing us, so many arguments that we never agree on anything. But when we realize that uh, we all, doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're from Israel, whether you're from Nigeria, whether you're from Malaysia, whether you're from uh, Lahore, it doesn't really matter where you come from, we all share the same issues, so many issues that confront us. We, there's more that tends to unite us and divide us. And so yeah, we, sure. we have to explore those issues uh -huh. that unite uh -huh. us rather than belabor those that uh, divide us. What we find here and in our own family, and I think our family is just a tiny cosmos of the larger life family, the D's in life. There's death in our family, death of our daughter, divorce, son got a divorce, uh, depression that our daughter went through, uh, the other daughter, after she got breast cancer, and there's disasters that come when you lose your home, your family. Uh, there are so many things that we all share the same. That's right. And diarrhea, so we have to have, you know. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> Whatever right. the D's are in life, that you right. drugs, drinking, mm -hmm. divorce, death, mm -hmm. all of it. It's, uh, it's the same in the whole uh, yeah. community of people. Uh, I wish that our good friend and sweet darling would come on and be. He's originally from... Karachi, Pakistan, and then we were in there a while in New Delhi, India, and our now our son at that time said the most beautiful women in the world were from New Delhi, India, or Karachi, I mean Karachi, Pakistan. But now that I've met you, I think they're all over in Israel. Oh, but you. when I saw the guy with Laos and then Miss Laos, I thought, oh, I believe the most beautiful women there. <laughs> so, what do you hope to do when you go back home? You're going home. You'll probably get interviewed on radio and television and newspaper. All of you will be. So what do you think your message will be? And I know you got a lot to go through with going on to, uh, let's see, Oregon. Um, yeah. And then and especially Washington. But what are some things you, uh, that you feel like you see already? Were you, or were you doing? I think one of the things that happened when I came to this group is that I met one of the other participants uh, from Trinidad, actually. Trinidad? And, yes, mm -hmm. and she's promoted, promoting uh, women's rights. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like remembered how this topic is very important to me. And I think besides what I'm already doing today at the Women's Equality Government in Israel, I will start moving on this direction, promoting women's rights in Israel, which is very dear and close to my heart. We, the last group that we had, they were all, all from Turkey, and they, they actually were all women, and that was their whole idea was women's rights, you know, because of some of the countries, especially in the countries they're familiar with, uh, women don't have a right. In fact, if one of our senators in the United States has uh, got a new platform, he wants to not allow women to vote anymore, <laughs> and so that's going a little back. Yeah, yeah go many, backwards. In many countries, it feels like we're going back uh -huh. instead so, of moving forward and promoting women. Uh -huh. When you get back, what do you think will be? You will be interviewed on radio and television and newspaper and speaking all over the country. So what are some of the things you hope to implement when you go back? I think basically what, what, what I expect to do is, uh, and I hope that to come to power really is to get the people, to get the people to to vote, get the people to have more power at the ballot. Cool. Give the people power, that is it, just give the people power. Could I and then you? Uh, explore ways to be able to work together that uh, irrespective of wherever we are from, um, let's submerge our differences for the larger cause. Mm -hmm. And the cause really is that, uh, like you rightly said, Disaster, war, problems of life, they, look, they know no religious barrier. It's not just in one nationality, not one tribe. Everywhere. It's everywhere. So. And I, I wish I could ask you, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can talk, we want the invitation. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about your story, which he is the face of the Well, as uh, you know, the, the, I mean, I think a bit about the program would be nice actually to know. Cool. This is the IVLP program, the part of the IVLP program, which is the International Visitors Leadership Program. It's a 70-year-old program sponsored by the State Department in Washington, D.C. 
and um, it, we have great alumni graduating from this program. For example, the current uh, uh, French uh, uh, head of the government, uh, Mr. Sarkozy, has graduated from here. Gordon Brown in the United Kingdom was a graduate from here. Margaret Thatcher was a graduate from here. Tony Blair was a graduate. Indira Gandhi was a graduate, and so on and so forth. And we have three Nobel laureates, uh, already our alumni of this program. So, so this interview you're taking today, Bonnie, could be that you're interviewing future, you know, who is who, probably in Israel and Nigeria. Heads of state. So, heads of states, prime ministers, or Nobel laureates for the future, or as I said, who is who. Maybe they're just important figures in their own countries later on. So that's a little bit about the program. It's a three-week program. And uh, as you already mentioned, they're visiting four uh, cities uh, in the United States. And some of them will be continuing their um, travel over here, uh, even beyond D.C., going to especially New York. Uh, but they will be on their own mm -hmm. doing some shopping and visiting friends and families here in the United States. Which is, part, which is about the part of this program. It's a cultural exchange program. Uh, and, and not only they meet like uh, people who are in the non-governmental organizations or we call non-profits over here in the United States, but they also go to home hospitalities and other events like musical evenings to learn about the culture of the United States and see how the real American life, that's why we are here in Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, so that's a little bit about the program. Now the question you pose about religion and the common uh, human, uh, you know, disasters or what have we all over the world. We recently were in New Orleans and we all know the New Orleans in 2005 was struck by Hurricane Katrina. And a similarity from the country I belong to in Pakistan, we, should, we, we just uh, witnessed the worst human fl floods in, in the history of mankind. So Katrina in New Orleans and floods in Pakistan, uh, that's a primarily a Muslim country and New Orleans is primarily, you know, is part of the United States, say, a Christian, you know, denomination, though there are so many people, diverse religious uh, the representation over there. So, yes, the calamities, natural calamities, they are devoid of religion. They don't see any religion there. So, as uh, uh, my friend Mike, or in a Coco, that's his last name, Coco. or in a Ruve, that's his first name, which he prefers, uh, he uh, mentioned that, the, you know, the religion cannot be a barrier. No. So human beings, they have the same necessities, and they suffer from the same calamities, and they need, uh, you know, help from the same human beings. I mean, in, in you know, that's why the purpose of a uh, multinational organization like United Nations, when the UN forces are assembled, they are not asked about their religion. You know, there there yeah. are Jews, there are Muslims, there are Christians, there are Hindus, there are Buddhists, and there are. They're atheists, they're agnostics, whoever, as long as you're willing to help another homo sapien, or we call them human being, that is what is required all over the world. And it can be any country. Israel, it's a very conflict-prone area, we all know about it, and there we have, the United States have aided them a lot about it. The country I belong to, Pakistan, the United States gives a lot of aid over there. And uh, Nigeria, we have helped them a lot. We are close friends and close allies. The two other uh, participants, one from Malaysia and from Laos, we have very close relations. As uh, Because I'm from the State Department, so I'm, calling it, I'm giving you this U.S. and the other country alliance over here picture. And we do not see religion. Religion is not part of it. We sit on the table, we, we sort out their problems, we try to figure out their problems, we try to give the resolve to those problems through financial aid, to human resources, what have you over there. And, and that's, that's the whole purpose of the program and we're delighted to have them over here and uh, I hope that when they go back, as uh, Natalie mentioned, that uh, a lot of partnerships uh, will take place and, uh, and, and hopefully we will continue this. That is an excellent overview and insightful to see how you have seen this because you're not originally part of the program. You just took part because someone could, got ill and, had, and said, right. said, oh, please, will you help me, got you. And I didn't say the last name, so I'm, I'm free. Yeah. And uh, you, you did it as a favor, oh, but you. you've been blessed as a result of being there. People have asked all afternoon, why do you do this program? Mm -hmm. And I think Tony and I do this because we want to understand what makes another human tick for many part of the world? Sure. That it doesn't matter, in the, and we've traveled and spoken around the world, and we've found that it, everybody has that need to be needed, mm -hmm. wanted, admired, mm -hmm. appreciated, mm -hmm. 
love, mm -hmm. that we feel that we count, right. that being a human being matters. And uh, I would you, I see you're looking at that. You had a great conversation with uh, our host today, who has uh, goat cheese, mm -hmm. and she owns this company, and she's invited us to her home to. Uh, and last night you were with a different group. But what were some of the conversations you were having with her? I was, I was just talking about the human rights situation, the civil rights movement in the United States, and all of that. And I was able to also shape the events in the world. Shape the events in the world, and they do. They really do. Uh, we got almost as much conflict with Tony being from Pennsylvania, which is <laughs> northern United States, and me being from Arkansas, which is southern United States, and I didn't understand his customs. Like you don't, even though we say some of the same language, he says words differently than I do. So whatever, whatever this, when you get married and you get married, you'll find out. And when Cassie yeah, gets married, <laughs> uh, you will find out that even another person could be from the same tribe, the same street, and you still would have challenges that you have to look and find the common denominator, as you said, rather than. The differences. Now, I think to me, my my creator is very important to me, mm -hmm. and uh, for also me, it's uh, his son Jesus Christ is very important to me. And then my husband being the head of the family, uh, you didn't hear that, did you, Tony? <laughs> and me, <laughs> and me being an, under my husband and our children under there. So I think there's a chain of command in all of us in some way that we feel like. Uh, the people who are the prime minister and who are the cabinet members and then now you got selected to come here yeah. and you go back and she'll be either the prime minister or cabinet member. You don't know what the Lord yeah. and uh, the future holds for you. It's because you are, you were willing to learn and now you're going to, what have they told you is going to happen in uh, New Orleans, I mean in, uh, you're going to Portland, Oregon, yes. and you're getting together with the other two groups, yes. your group A, one, number one, because number yeah, one two. group, and then the yeah, other two one is group yes. two and group three. Yeah. And yeah. It'll be interesting, one went to a farming group, is that correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. I went to a farm, mm -hmm. yeah. And so you'll have a totally different idea. And you went to a couple of fundraisers yesterday yes. that only happen once a year, and they raise money for their private schools. Yeah. And what do you think of that? <laughs> As I heard Kashi say, as she say, everybody's selling something in America. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always selling and there's buyers. But it was for a good cause. It was for a good cause. And uh -huh. we learn new ways of raising funds for, new, for good cause. Uh huh. Raising yeah. funds for new good cause because there's always buyers and sellers, and you need to buy from. What will help other people? This will happen anyhow. Uh huh. It will happen anyhow. So why not promoting it for a good cause and getting people involved? You can see so many people like taking a day off and, and going to promote a good cause, being happy, helping others. It's great. Mm -hmm. And even though that we bid on something that we don't <laughs> know if we got it because we weren't there when they read the bids. But who knows, you might get one in the mail. You, you may have won the bid. <laughs> so, in your opinion, what do you really see going next for, for you and for you and your country? Do you see other parts of Kenya and other areas of, of Africa, even South Africa, and maybe getting together with some other? Yeah, group? of course, absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what do you see that you could do to help one man? Remember, we talked. One man, if they have followers, can change the world. Yeah, sure. And so you may. What we do one. is just to promote the cause of peace around the world. To promote the cause of peace, and I, when I'm talking about peace, I'm not talking about a, peace. A, 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 a negative peace. No. I'm not talking about a, a, a peace that is the absence of tension, but peace with the presence of justice, love, and goodwill for all men. Love and goodwill for all men. I love that. Redemptive goodwill. Uh -huh. Now, you had a birth defect that uh, you come here, 
couldn't walk everywhere. I mean, you did walk everywhere, but you might have been hurting. But how did you have the fortitude, the guts, the boldness to uh, to come on anyway? Even though you might have, you thought a lot of walking, I don't know if I can do that. Well, I always think that uh, in life, you should always place others above yourself. Please. Always place others above yourself. Please. Other people. Place others. 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 Yeah. Okay. Other people's interest above yourself. Don't, uh, I don't believe in putting my self interest first. I don't believe that. I think that uh, the world will be a better place if we realize that other people matter. And, uh, and that in order to be well treated, you have to also treat others the way you want to be treated. You treat others like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. I think that's a golden rule in the good yeah. books. So if you, do, if you do that, really, and that has been, and, and that and that is born out of love, which born out of love. Yes, which which have been identified by all of the religions in the world as the supreme unifying force of life. So yeah. if you if you follow that, it doesn't matter whether you're Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Buddha, whatever you call it, love is the supreme unifying force of life. And when you talk of love. We are talking of uh, uh, the God kind of love, the love for others. You, you, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not loving others because of what you're going to get from them. You are loving them because God or whatever thing you think has a supreme force in the earth. It may not be go some people may not see it as God. Whatever, whatever you defer to, that thing that you defer to, whatever you call it, whether God or whatever you call it in your own religion. That thing that you defer to, that thing, love that person first. Love and that person first. And because you, that, you love that person first, you too want to love the person. Not because you want the person to love you. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a sort of a, 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 a romantic love or a no. hero's love. It's not a, a filial love. You love somebody because you want to get something from them. No. you just loving the person because God loves the person first. I got the love. Yes. Uh, well, I, I was thinking as you were talking about uh, that kind of love, the, well, it brings in forgiveness. I, there's an old thing we used to teach called the 90-10 plan. In the 90-10 plan, you think of the other person 90% of the time and yourself 10% of the time. But I just recently read where you think of the other person 100% of the time. To write, when you're together, forget yourself and just think about what is that need from that person. What is it? different about each of you that could help change the world. Do you think if you uh, if you win this Nobel Prize, either one <laughs> of you, or heads of state, or prime minister, or whatever the title will be, that that will change you? You forget about us in Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna. I better get your autograph now while you're in town. <laughs> so I can say, I knew that person. I met that person. I okay. think we're strong believers. Strong believers, very uh -huh. much. Uh -huh. We have a lot of faith, mm -hmm. and not as you said, religious faith. Faith, faith in love. Uh -huh. Faith, you know. And the I good think of out there. Yeah, of yourself there is and good. others. There, there is. There are many good people around the world. And we saw it in all of you. Yes, in the last, especially in Alabama. Alabama. Uh -huh. Oh, there, there you go. She's saying all the right things, isn't she? Well, I am so glad that you uh, joined us. I haven't seen the... Uh, our, oh, one minute. Okay, so we better tell who all the groups are. We'll start with you, Natalie. Tell your, uh, your name again and what country you're from. And <laughs> I'm going to call him Mike till I get it destroyed <laughs> in my head. Wow. Everybody will be laughing at me. Go ahead. Why? I'm Natalie and I'm from Israel. And go ahead. Well, I'm in Nairobi. I'm from in, in Nairobi, and I'm from Nigeria. And the other two are Adrian, Adrian from Malaysia, and Malaysia, Menomin from Laos. Laos. Yes. One of them's an attorney. So we yes, Menomin yeah. is an attorney. Menomin. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And we're glad that you joined us because without you, we wouldn't have help for you to meet these wonderful people. And we very much appreciate Tony coming down. And running cameras for us, and we appreciate Has an Cassie, officer from Washington, an officer from Washington, uh, Washington D.C. Yeah. that <laughs> gave his time to be a part of our group. 
I'm Bonnie Bear Park. Bless your heart.